and welcome back to ANN News Kids. This week on the headlines, we have the Twitter CEO Elon Musk, who's going to be stepping down at the end of the year, LeBron James, the basketball legend, and the Chinese CEO Bao Fan missing. We are talking about riddles in the fan crazy culture segment. And in the secondary headlines, we have New Zealand's flight that turned back the new modern skier. We also have the Amazon new major rule and big change in the company. We really hope you enjoy. This week, we are interviewing Mrs. Sophie Ganashrom in Tokyo, who is the head of Tramp Trampoline, which is a social enterprise incubator in Mauritius. I really hope you enjoy what she has to say. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment below because we are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. Breaking news from China, the CEO of China Renaissance mysteriously disappeared that's causing the stock prices to plummet. He is a well-known figure in the tech industry of China and his name is Bao Fan. In 2015, he was a veteran figure that merged two big food companies and that was huge. But this is not the first time that a big CEO or someone famous has disappeared mysteriously in China, which is leading people to be to wonder what's going on behind the scenes and why did he dis disappear so suddenly. LeBron James is a legendary basketball player that just broke a record that stood for more than 40 years. LeBron James is really good and he's been playing for a long time, more than 20 years. And now he has just become the person who has scored the most times in the NBA, which is a huge deal. He's not just one of the best scorers, but he's also a good person who passes the ball and helps others score, which is, could be another secret to his success. And he is also the, one of the greatest players of all times, and he will be remembered for generations to come. The tech world is abuzz with the news that Elon Musk, the billionaire entrepreneur and the Twitter CEO, is stepping down by the end of the year. But don't worry, he's not leaving without a plan. He is currently on the hunt for the perfect candidate to replace him and take over. And he's also determined that Twitter is in a financially fit state and stable condition before handing over the reins. Many people are wondering who the next person is going to be because Twitter has had its ups and downs recently. Also, adding to the anticipation, the many Twitter advertisers have stopped spending, which is bringing a big question whether Twitter is going to make it and become bigger and how it's going to become in a better state than it is now. Hi everybody, this week for the Crazy Culture segment, I'm going to be telling you some riddles. I hope you enjoy. I am not alive, but I can grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. You can feed me, but water kills me. What am I? Fire. What has a heart that doesn't beat? A deck of cards. I am light as a feather, yet the strongest man in the world cannot hold me for more than a few minutes. What am I? Breath. I am always in front of you, but can't be seen. The future. I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Echo. I really hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome back to the Premature Career segment. This week we are interviewing Ms. Sophie Ganoshomo in Tokyo, who is the head of Trampoline, a social enterprise incubator in Mauritius. I hope you enjoy her advice and journey as it's very interesting and I hope you learn something new. Uh, a bit about myself. Yes, uh, my name is Sophie Ganasho. Uh, I'm 34. Um, I have one child and I'm pregnant with my second now. 
Um, and I'm currently working as lead executive um, for a social um, enterprise incubator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, well, that's nice. Thank you so much. And can you tell me more about your job and what you do in it? My job and what I do in it. Uh, so my job is uh, on a on a daily basis, uh, mm -hmm. sort of changes every day, um, and um, I guess that the way I approach work on a daily basis is that I get a, a set of problems that I need to solve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of challenges and it's a, it's a lot of fun at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Um, when, when I take this approach, I'd say, uh, but basically what I have to do on a, on a daily basis is that I'm, I'm managing the structure and, um, building it at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of strategic work, um, that I'm, that I have to do and that I'm learning along the way as well. Um, and basically, uh, the structure I work for, we design and run programs um, to support aspiring entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs um, mm -hmm. to develop social enterprises, projects that they feel confident to pursue, um, and then help them um, launch their project and right. scale their project. Um, we're also interested to work with NGOs um, mm -hmm. who are willing to pivot into a revenue model um right. so that they can sustain their um their mission and their and their impact wow that's yeah. that's really great mm -hmm. and could you tell us a bit how you got into this field of work uh did you always want to do this or was it just um an opportunity that came by and you took it um i think that um for as long as i can remember um, I've always work for me was always um, envisioned as something that I would be passionate about, and it would have to be something meaningful. Um, right. uh, I guess uh, work for me was never just about um, generating an income. Uh, it was a means to an end, um, mm -hmm. but the priority for me was really to find a way where I could meaningfully contribute for to build a better world. So that's that's what I've always wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to study. Uh, I did a three-year bachelor at Curtin University in Perth, and that was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I've studied social sciences, and I majored in anthropology, mm -hmm. um, which is a very broad sort of... Um, expertise and set of skills that uh, you develop and it can be applied in so many ways mm -hmm. it's it's really the the kind of study that you do and then you come out of it and you're like eh, now what do I do <laughs> <laughs> um, and so from then on I guess it was um, I guess the journey was about grabbing the interesting opportunities that came by um, but also looking for these opportunities. I guess I guess it's a two-way process. Um, right. So I started, um, well, when I came back to Mauritius, because I, I have a bit of experience uh, in Australia as well, but when I came back to Mauritius, I, um, I, I found out, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I realized, I learned that um, at that time Mauritius was, the second biggest um, consumer of injecting drugs uh, per capita in the world. And I was oh. like, how did I grow up in a country and not know about this? <laughs> um, and I felt really compelled by this. And um, I started working with a rehab center, Chrysalid, uh, an NGO based in Bamboo, uh, where I learned a lot and mm -hmm. um, was lucky to work on all sorts of different projects. Um, and then um, with a team of 
great people. We decided to build a new structure because we saw there was a there was a gap um, and a service a set of services that were missing, um, mm-hmm. specifically targeted um, uh, targeting sex workers in Mauritius. So there was no there was no structure serving this highly vulnerable community with lots of lots and lots and lots of issues and and needs um so um we went on to build that structure um at grassroots level and manage the structure for a bit and then and then went on with other opportunities well that's wow. great it's nice to see how um you know you've been moving around but also adapting to whatever job it is and learning more it's, it's great yeah um, yeah. So you said that a big part of your job was liking it. So what exactly right now do you love about your job? Um, what exactly do I like about my job uh, today? Um, we're very excited to be launching a new program um, mm-hmm. next week. Um, wow. So we're la- launching our first pre-incubation program. So that's really targeted at the idea stage um, concept um of uh social enterprise um so we we're going to onboard 16 projects next week so i'm really excited about this and wow. um so yeah I, I guess the the actual content of what we do uh is is a lot of fun for us um but maybe to be a bit more um precise on the type of things that uh, i appreciate with my job today is that uh, we get to be creative and Mm -hmm. we get to be agile we have to keep on our feet and keep thinking about the way that we've done things um what did we do what was the result that we wanted what did we actually achieve um and then um rethink how could we do things better what is it that we want to achieve and how can we develop a strategy to achieve that? Um, mm-hmm. So basically last year we ran our first program and um, we, it, was a, it was a great learning curve for us and we really, really mm-hmm. kept, we have a small team, so we kept that um, agile methodology, I'd say, um, mm-hmm. to readjust as we moved forward and then develop this new strategy this year to sort of diversify and launch new programs targeted at different stages. And um, so now we're launching this new program and we're going to be having fun testing it. And at the same time, testing doesn't mean that we're not delivering quality. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's, it's, I guess it's a lot of fun to um, test new things and right. um by that, I mean that we're doing it for the first time. So we're really um, cautious about what is what are the results that we're getting and how can we improve continuously and, and as we move forward. So we need to be quick and we need to take decisions um, fast and we need to be creative to make things better and still achieve the quality that, that we want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very exciting. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. That's very nice. And finally, what advice do you have for kids? What advice do you have for kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say um, I would say that it's um, that it's a it's a it's a great uh, a great way to go about it is um, to understand that each of us have has the capacity to contribute. Mm-hmm. Um, capacity, uh, maybe the responsibility as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a there's a there's a simple exercise that um, we usually uh, like to promote um, and it's and it's about understanding what are problems that you're passionate about what are the skills that you have um, that you've developed and and that are that comes naturally I'd say mm-hmm. um, and 
What are you passionate about? And when you link these three items um, in the center, you can come up with lots of um, interesting ways that you can contribute to the world, um, whether it's through a career choice or um, something that you want to do on the side. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's Thank great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for everything today. Uh, it was wonderful listening to you and your story. And yeah, we're really excited and we're glad that we interviewed you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you for your time today. It was really nice talking to you. And thank you. <laughs> awesome. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Thank you. Thank and you. And congratu congratulations on the launch. and. Uh, Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Goodbye. Imagine you're on a long haul flight from Auckland to New York, the city that never sleeps, and you're excited for your new adventure. Although suddenly, after a power outage in the JFK airport, you have to turn back and your adventure comes to an end. That's what happened when a 16 hour flight from New Zealand to New York had to turn around just because of a power outage in JFK airport. After that, the pilot said that they could not go to any other nearby airport because it was impossible and it would create inconvenience for the passengers. The airline said that they were very sorry, although people said that the crew was very gentle and helpful and they did get some great things at the end. So it wasn't all bad. In an incredible display of skill and determination, Michaela Schifrin, the American skier, won her seventh medal at the Alpine World Championships in Maribel, France and cemented her status as the number one in the world in the modern era as a skier. At just 27 years old, she took the lead in the Shalom race that was really good at the beginning, but then she dropped to 12th place in the second round. Although at the end, she won by just 0 0.12 seconds, which was fantastic. This came as a surprise because she did not even win a single medal in the Beijing Olympics last year. And just a day before her victory, her longtime coach left the team. But despite all the hardships and the challenges, she still rose to the top and accepted her medals graciously. Amazon just announced a major change in the company that is sending ripples throughout Amazon. They just announced that as from May 1st, all the people will have to work at least three days a week in person. And that's just ending the online working policy. Now, all, all the co-workers are excited about this, but the CEO, Andy Jassy, is very optimistic and believes that this change is going to bring a new and better workplace culture, better communication, and career development skills. <laughs>